Support for Carolina Impact comes from our viewers and Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo has donated $390 million Sunny, like I said, you get your own room. to support housing affordability solutions across America. Doing gets it done. Wells Fargo, the bank of doing. This is a production of PBS Charlotte. Just ahead on Carolina Impact, on the one year anniversary of the war in Ukraine, we learn how refugees here in Charlotte are doing. Preserving the plane that's part of aviation's history while serving the next generation that could be aviation's future. I'm Jeff Sonier out here at the airport with a look at the new museum that wants to do both. And we meet a real pet Picasso. Carolina Impact starts right now. Carolina Impact, covering the issues, people, and places that impact you. This is Carolina Impact. Good evening, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. This week marks the one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The war has resulted in tens of thousands of deaths, as well as Europe's largest refugee crisis since World War II. It's estimated that roughly eight million Ukrainians have fled the country, mostly women and children. While most of those refugees remain in various parts of Europe, some have made their way to the United States and to here in Charlotte. Carolina Impact's Jason Terzis shows us how the existing Ukrainian community here has rallied to support their fellow countrymen. Creating unique sounds. Practicing those dance moves. And of course, enjoying story time. Just some of the things you'd expect to see at a daycare. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. But if you listen, you'll hear a language that's most likely unfamiliar. The language is Ukrainian, and it's being spoken at the Legacy European Academy at the Matthews United Methodist Church. We have created a um, Russian slash Ukrainian daycare. We created this to just keep our culture all together. A good number of the 40 plus children who attend Legacy are Ukrainian refugees, having come to the United States over the last year since Russia's invasion. This is a safe place for, for kids uh, and we try to make them happy because they saw the war. They came here so sad, so scared. Thanks in part to donations totaling more than $7,000, Legacy was able to provide summer day camps to 20 children for free. But as news reports of the war have dwindled over the last year, so too have those donations. I take the kids for free in our daycare. At least for first month, they came here with, with nothing. It breaks my heart that we can't help every single person, it really does break my heart and I just wish we had more uh, budget and more donations to keep more children because they need it. Stop their war! Stop their war! When the invasion first began, local Ukrainians gathered in Romare Bearden Park to protest. Save Ukraine! Save Ukraine! Among them, Marina Alexander, who immigrated to the United States from Ukraine 26 years ago. Most of our friends are Americans, so when the war happened, it was like a punch in the gut. It's, um, it's very hard to explain. Um, it's almost like you start realizing that your entire childhood is being erased. An award-winning, classically trained guitarist, Marina began seeing some of the same people from Romare Bearden at other protests. And we just start noticing each other. We start noticing people who are more active than others. And we basically contacted each other on Facebook and decided to form a committee so we, our rallies could be more organized. The newly formed committee named itself Charlotte for Ukraine, created social media platforms, and before they knew it, refugees coming to the Queen City started seeking them out. Because these people need help with absolutely everything. Because of the language barrier, they need a lot, a lot of assistance. They created the charlotteforukraine.org website, filled with information about local food banks, doctor's offices, finding places to live, daycare options like legacy, and just general support. And it's all run by local volunteers. Because they're all eager to work, but the problem is finding for them work. So we're helping them, we contact in the local stores, we talk to managers, 
and seeing if they could take someone who doesn't speak great English yet. I'm really thankful for them because uh, when we just arrived, I had uh, I had some problems with my house, and they didn't uh, I didn't have health insurance, uh, and uh, Marina and her and volunteers. Uh, they can find doctors who can help. An estimated three to four hundred Ukrainian families have come to the region over the last year. Yulia Mikachova and her 11-year-old daughter Ava went from Ukraine to Western Europe, Mexico, into the United States, first to Colorado and then to Charlotte last summer. It's uh, very difficult to start our life from the beginning. A girlande svetle. Snek is vaty bielay. Wanting to create a sense of community and fellowship, Charlotte for Ukraine in January brought together refugee families at the Plaza Midwood International and Cultural Center. It was all part of a holiday celebration of the Orthodox Christmas and New Year. So we all came together and decided to produce this party at no cost to kids. So we looked for partners, for sponsors, and uh, they actually came through from Russian and Ukrainian community. The business owners uh, donated. The holiday variety show featured everything from stories, singing, dancing, music, face painting, arts and crafts, toy balloons, baked goods, and even little ballerinas. All of it being done in an effort to bring just a little joy to people who've been through so much. Today, day is really like fairy tale. Uh, I remember, I remember these events, the holiday events, Christmas events from Ukraine. Yeah, because I was the vice principal in Kyiv. I mean, honestly, it's a huge stress relief to be able to help people. Otherwise, you feel helpless. You feel like you don't care. You feel guilty. You feel guilty for being here, for being safe, and, and those people are suffering. For these Ukrainian refugees, nothing is familiar. They're in a new country with new people, a new language, new city, new culture, new foods, new everything. But in a way, they're the lucky ones. All my family lives there. So my father, my stepmother, my brother, my sisters live in Ukraine and they are still there. They, they never moved. Our classmates are still in Ukraine, our friends, are, my teachers are in Ukraine. What those here have is safety, but still carrying the fear of the unknown for those loved ones still in Ukraine. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jason Terzis reporting. Thank you so much, Jason. After seeing the devastation the war has caused to the Ukraine's infrastructure, many of the refugees Jason spoke with told him they hope to remain here in America, in the Charlotte region, even after the war ends. And they tell us they're hoping other family members will someday be able to join them here. Do you remember Miracle on the Hudson? Of course you do. The whole world was watching back in 2009 when a U.S. Airways flight from New York to Charlotte wound up instead in the Hudson River. Everybody on that plane survived, and now the actual plane itself is getting a new home here in Charlotte. Carolina Impact's Jeff Sonier and videographer Doug Stacker take us out to Douglas International Airport for an early sneak peek at Charlotte's new Sullenberger Aviation Museum. Yeah, we're out here just on the edge of a very busy Charlotte Airport runway where construction crews out here, yeah, they're pretty busy too. Preparing a fitting final destination here for U.S. Airways' most famous plane. Cactus 1539 hit birds, lost thrust and focus. The plane shook. You could feel the whole plane shake. As soon as I turned and looked out the window, I noticed the left engine was just shooting out flames. Brace, brace, brace. Heads down, stay down. My feeling was that there was no way we were going to survive. Cactus 1549, radar contact is lost. Oh, I think he said he was going to the Hudson. As Charlotte also honors the heroism of U.S. Airways' most famous pilot. It felt as if the bottom had fallen out of our world. I've come to have a greater appreciation of what everyone accomplished that day under very trying circumstances. First time I talked to Sully was as we waited in the pier to be released. Uh, and that seemed like an eternity. Rick Elias was a shivering survivor of Flight 1549 that January night in New York Harbor. Now forever grateful to Sullenberger and his crew. So this museum is in honor of a great team that saved 155 lives. Captain Sullenberger. 
And Sullenberger is thankful, too, for the millions donated here in Charlotte to make sure nobody ever forgets that miracle on the Hudson. I want to thank everyone who has worked so hard to advance the museum project, especially the passengers on our flight, who, like me, are so glad that our airplane from Flight 1549 is preserved as the embodiment of our story. The miracle on the Hudson Plain itself has been here in Charlotte for years, on display in this old World War II hangar that doubled for decades as Charlotte's original aviation museum. It's not just a building, it is an artifact. But museum president Stephen Saussier says preserving this old hangar is just the beginning of what visitors will see at the new Sullenberger Museum. The real buildings, the real planes, the real people, those authentic stories. And that's how you have a conversation with your, with your audience. One of the things that we love to do around the Miracle on the Hudson is we love to have the passengers and crew come to the museum and tell their stories. I literally felt like my heart had just sunk and fell on the floor. I'm like, this is it, I'm gonna die. But that quickly was washed over by this sense of calmness. When I was praying, I remember that I wasn't saying, please save us, because I didn't think we could be saved. I didn't see a chance of us being saved. I was just thinking to myself, please don't make this horrible for my family. Charlotte passengers Beth McHugh and Ben Bostick, who shared the same row on flight 1549. Yeah, like right up in one of those windows is where I was staring out at the engine on the way down. There were life jackets on this plane. Also share their memories of that miracle landing with Charlotte visitors here at the old museum. Within five seconds, the water was up to my knees already. And you're jumping out of a window and trying to get into this life raft and there's this much frigid water in the bottom of the life raft too. So people out here on the wings were sliding off into the water. Some of the stronger men would get into the water and actually push them back up onto the wings. There were a lot of unsung heroes that day, a lot of people who went out of their way to be totally human and kind and help other people to survive. There's not too many people that survived a plane crash. Survivor Dave Sanderson frequently visits the hospital back in New Jersey, hosting events for the medical staff that treated him and so many others after the crash. And that's when I realized, whoa, I was one of the last passengers off this thing. And all of a sudden, my life's like, wow. I mean, I was shocked when I saw that on TV. And that's what sort of opened my eyes, like, this is a miracle. This is really a miracle. There were people walking on water. So I thought I was honestly dead. Turns out what Barry Leonard was actually seeing that day is what we all saw. His fellow 1549 passengers standing on those wings. Now those same passengers are helping to save the plane that saved them, raising money for the Sullenberger Museum's 1549 Foundation. The flight lasted a total of 206 seconds and it changed my life and 154 other people's lives as well. The new home of Flight 1549 here in Charlotte could also change more lives in the future, using those real life stories of that miracle on the Hudson to inspire aviation's next generation through education. We saw that there were so many kids that were not able to get into these fields. So kids will gravitate to those authentic experiences those authentic people, the authentic stories, and then hopefully see themselves as making their story. Build on that wonder, build on that excitement, build on that intrinsic motivation, and then introduce these career opportunities where they can make, and they can do, and they can build, they can create, they can innovate. And maybe, just maybe, learning more about the miracle on the Hudson's now famous pilot at the new Sullenberger Aviation Museum could produce a future solid. So if lending my name to this effort can help inspire and elevate the next generations of innovators, I'm all in. And you know who else is all in on this museum project? Well, Charlotte's corporate community, Honeywell Corporation, based here in Charlotte, they made the uh, backup power system that allowed Flight 1549 to land. 
Bank of America had more than 20 employees on board the flight. And Red Ventures down in Fort Mill, well, their founder and CEO, Rick Elias, was the passenger who introduced Sully earlier in this story. All of them making major contributions to preserve that plane and those stories and to uh, serve those kids who might want to fly in the future. Amy? It's going to be a great facility. Thank you so much, Jeff. Well, we've got more information about Charlotte's Sullenberger Aviation Museum on our website, pbscharlotte.org. Click on the link for your own personal tour of the new museum, plus photos of all the historic planes in their amazing aviation collection. Well, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you, last fall was my first visit to Grandfather Mountain. It's just a couple hours away, and it's absolutely stunning. The mile-high swinging bridge is like nothing I had ever experienced before. I sat at the end of it, marveling at the beauty, and didn't ever want to leave. Carolina Impact's Jason Terzas and producer John Branscombe take us there. Scenic and majestic views throughout the western North Carolina mountains offer travelers a different perspectives of the natural world. For those who pass through the gates at Grandfather Mountain and take this winding mountain road all the way up to the top, they're rewarded with spectacular views, the unique mile-high swinging bridge, a recently renovated nature center, and up-close wildlife encounters. Grandfather Mountain is a classic North Carolina tourism destination. When you think of the whole state of North Carolina, from the mountains to the coast, a visit to Grandfather Mountain is just one of those things everyone needs to experience. Grandfather Mountain gets its name from the iconic silhouette of the mountain from a distance. I think it looks like an old man's face. The face is lying down looking up to the sky. Grandfather Mountain is comprised of over 6,000 acres with several primary stakeholders. We have Grandfather Mountain State Park, the Grandfather Mountain Stewardship Foundation, which operates and owns the attraction side of Grandfather. And then we also have uh, other properties that are owned by the Nature Conservancy and Blue Ridge Conservancy for conservation and preservation purposes. Hugh Morton inherited Grandfather Mountain from his grandfather, from the McRae family, and uh, established the park as we know it today. He had the vision for completing the park road to the summit of Grandfather Mountain at Linville Peak, which is the fourth highest peak of Grandfather, and had the vision for the mile high swinging bridge, and everybody thought he was crazy. The bridge cost $15,000 to construct. The grand opening of the Mile High Swinging Bridge was originally in September 2nd, 1952, and Governor Umstead, who was governor of North Carolina at the time, was here for the grand opening of the bridge, and his daughter was the first person to cross the bridge. The Mile High Swinging Bridge may have put Grandfather Mountain on the map as a must-see tourist destination, but one major attraction resulted by chance in the late 1960s. The animal habitats happened very much out of circumstance. Mildred the bear was brought to Grandfather Mountain to be a wild bear. She was released into the wild, and within 24 hours, she was back in the park, hanging out with employees. And within a week, she had wandered to Linville. And so the Wildlife Commission said, Mildred's gonna have to go into captivity. But at that point, Mr. Morton had fallen absolutely in love with her and decided to keep her at Grandfather Mountain. And so Mildred the bear is the reason we have the environmental animal habitats here at Grandfather Mountain. The first bear habitat was built in 1973, and Mildred the bear lived at Grandfather Mountain for nearly 27 years until her passing in 1993. But her paw print on the mountain was certainly made. Today, you can see much more than just bears at the park. Here at Grandfather Mountain, we have black bears, cougars, river otters, elk, and bald eagles that are on display in the habitats for the visitors to come see. All of the animals that we have here are native to North Carolina or were once here. Personally, my favorite probably would be the otters. Uh, I really love how playful they are. They're very intelligent. The cougars would be a very close second because I'm a cat person as well. Grandfather Mountain animal curator Christy Tipton says the animals serve a purpose. The reason that we have the animals here is it's a good opportunity for people that don't always get a chance to see these animals out in the wild, to come and see them, you know, help form connections with them, learn all about them, and learn how they are important to the environment. Tipton adds that each animal at the park is there for a reason. They have either been raised around humans, so they're too used to people. Some of them have been orphaned out in the wild, 
got too used to people when they were you know, brought into a rehabber. Some of them have been injured out in the wild and they can't be released due to those injuries. So all of them are here because they cannot live on their own in the wild. The best part about working with the animals uh, for me is just forming the relationships with them. And from species to species, they're just so different and so amazing in their own way. So it's just incredible to be able to work with these guys. There's lots to do at Grandfather Mountain and even a bit of Hollywood history. There's been many films and commercials uh, recorded on Grandfather Mountain. The most famous is the Forrest Gump movie. There was a scene filmed here on one of our switchbacks on the road going to the summit of Grandfather Mountain where Tom Hanks ran across country as Forrest Gump. But the runner in the film was actually Tom Hanks' brother. He was his body double that did a lot of the running scenes in the movie. And so Tom Hanks was not here that day uh, filming that, it was his brother. Now there's one thing you definitely want to consider when planning a trip to Grandfather Mountain, and that's the weather. So Grandfather Mountain is a place of extreme biological diversity, but it's also known for its weather extremes. Um, this is known as probably the windiest place in North Carolina with winds exceeding 124 miles per hour. Today, here at Grandfather Mountain, we have 50 to 60 mile an hour winds. For safety, staff regularly measure the wind speed and close off access to the swinging bridge if gusts exceed 50 miles per hour. Even moderately high winds add to the experience when crossing the iconic swinging bridge. But even on a windy day, Jesse Pope says Grandfather Mountain is so much more. The biggest part of Hugh Morton's vision here at Grandfather was he always wanted to protect the resources. He wanted to have public access so people could come and experience it. And it's a really special, iconic, international destination. When you come, every day is a different experience. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jason Terzis reporting. Thank you so much, Jason. If you're planning a trip to visit the Swinging Bridge and animal habitats at Grandfather Mountain, you'll need to purchase tickets in advance on their website. Well, Americans spent an estimated $109.6 billion on our pets last year. Here's a picture of my beloved Shih Tzu, Maxie Mae. We used it on the adoption announcements that we sent to our family and friends almost 15 years ago now. I know we've taken hundreds of pictures of her, but I had never considered having her portrait painted. Until now. Producer John Branscombe introduces us to a Rock Hill resident known as the Pet Picasso. Art just makes me relaxed. It's my peaceful way of tuning into myself. I'm Natalie Vale and I'm the owner of Pet Picasso Designs. I do everything. I paint, market, I ship off all of my paintings all around the world. Before painting, I was a dental assistant, and in my free time, I ended up painting my pet Lacey. COVID hit, and then I started up my business. What picture they want to use, the color background that they want, I like to make things more fun with my paintings. I only use acrylic paint at the moment. It dries quick and I'm able to add a lot of detail. I already have the background painted for um, the pet portrait. Next, I'll start by painting the actual pet. I always start with the eyes first and then the nose after that. I just like to get the facial features out of the way. When I start painting, Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, this does not look good. And then everything comes together at the end. The more details I add, the better it turns out. And I'm a perfectionist, which is terrible because I'm very hard on myself. I've had people in the past say, you know, this is a lot of money, but people don't understand how detailed the paintings are. For example, my smallest size takes around 10 plus hours to finish. Just gonna put my colors out that I use the most. I made my own logo. I started up an Instagram page. TikTok was my way of really getting my name out there. If you're a pet lover, stop scrolling. I went viral um, January of, of 2022, posted it the night before it went viral. And I woke up the next morning and my mom, she's a huge supporter of me. 
in my TikTok and she was on it and she was like, Natalie, you need to go look at your TikTok right now. And I was like, what's going on? She's like, it is blowing up. And it went from 400 to like 600,000 views in probably 20 minutes. It was going that fast. And I was like, this is crazy. And then I started getting orders um, like left and right. So I've shipped my paintings out to Australia. I shipped one off to Switzerland, England, and around the UK. It's really cool. I never thought in a million years that I would be shipping all around the world. <laughs> the craziest pets I've painted would have to be a gecko. I've never painted a gecko until this year, and that turned out to be one of the coolest paintings I've ever completed. Um, I've also painted uh, potbelly pigs and a horse, which is not crazy, but that's really cool to do other than dogs and cats. I mean, everybody's gonna want their pet painted. It's never gonna die down, I feel like. I have so much joy whenever people want me to paint their pet, especially ones that I've passed. It makes me feel so good inside that I'm able to capture their pet on a canvas for them to have forever. I'm 22 and I went from being a dental assistant to a full-time artist. Pretty crazy how I'm just this young, but I'm a business owner. I would just say, go for it, take that chance. You never know what you're capable of. Those paintings are extraordinary. Natalie isn't the only artist in the family. Her brother paints motorcycle helmets and they recently collaborated painting someone's pet on a helmet. Talent definitely runs in that family. Well, before we go, I'd like to thank our friends from Victory Christian Center School in Charlotte and folks from Central Piedmont's Marketing Department for coming to visit us as we recorded tonight's show. Well, we'd love to learn about the great things going on in your neighborhoods. Please email us your Carolina Impact feature ideas to stories at WTVI.org. Well, that's all the time we have this evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We always appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you back here again next time on Carolina Impact. Good night, my friends. Production of PBS Charlotte. Support for Carolina Impact comes from our viewers and Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo has donated $390 million Sorry, like I said, you get your own room. to support housing affordability solutions across America. Doing gets it done. Wells Fargo, the bank of doing.